Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a muzzle flash effect inside of After Effects. First things first, open your footage in After Effects. The most important thing for a muzzle flash is the muzzle flash. Great resources for stock elements is Action Essentials by Video Copilot, but a cheaper alternative is to grab a photo of a muzzle flash against a black background off of Google. Now, scrub to the point in the video where the muzzle flash will go off. Cut out the very next frame after this. This will make the kick from the gun look more violent and less like your talent is just flicking the gun in his hands. Now, place the muzzle flash where you want it and set the blending mode to screen to remove the black background. Rotate and scale the muzzle flash to fit on the frame where it's fired. General rule for a pistol is it should be about the size of a gun. And then for bigger guns, like rifles, it should be around two thirds of the size. Then trim the muzzle flash to only span one frame. On your muzzle flash layer, go up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and add a fast box blur. Dial the blur radius to 10, and then duplicate the muzzle flash layer twice, and crank the blur radius up on these until it adds a nice glow around it. Next, go up to Layer and add a new solid. This is going to be the environmental glow. Use the dropper tool to make it a similar color to the muzzle flash, set the blending mode to soft light, select the pen tool, and start drawing a mask anywhere the muzzle flash would have cast light. Feather each of those out to get rid of any hard edges, adjust the opacity to make it look more natural, and then select the stopwatch to keyframe and have it fade to zero over the course of the next two frames. The muzzle flash looks too bright to me, so I'm going to bring the opacity down to blend it better into the scene. Next up, let's add some smoke. Bring in your smoke stock footage, enable time remapping, and adjust the keyframes to last only a handful of frames, because smoke disappears pretty quick. With your smoke layer selected, go up to Effect, Channel, Shift Channel, and set the alpha to luminance. Then go up to Effect, Channel, Remove Color Matting, and these two steps remove the black background from your footage. Adjust the smoke's position so it fits in your scene, then duplicate the smoke layer and label the one below as Smoke Shadow. With the shadow layer selected, go up to Effect, Color Correction, Tint, and map the white to black. Now right click the smoke layer and enable it as a 3D layer. Press R on your keyboard to bring up rotation options and adjust the orientation and position until it lines up with where the shadows would be in your scene. I'm going to be placing it on the hood of the car. Then adjust the opacity until it blends into the scene. If you have a lot of motion in your scene, track in the smoke. Important tip, never apply a track to an effect layer. Go up to layer and create a new null object and apply the track to that. Now I'm going to make the slide on the gun slide back. Press Ctrl D to duplicate your base footage and adjust the in and out points so that you only have that single frame where the muzzle flash is visible. Use the pen tool to mask out just the slide, then press F to bring up the feather options and set it to 5. Grab that slide and bring it back to wherever it would be if a real gun were firing. Then go up to your effect, blur and sharpen, and add a directional blur. Aim the direction to where the slide would be going and crank up the blur amount. Last step is the heat distortion. I'm doing this with the heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot, but you can do the same with turbulent displacement. Go up to Layer, New, and click New Adjustment Layer. Add heat distortion or turbulent displacement, then eyeball it until you get an amount that looks right for the heat coming from the flash. You can go subtle or more over the top for a stylized look. Then make an elliptical mask around the muzzle flash and crank up the feathering. I like to make my heat distortion last about two frames, so I keyframe the distortion amount back down to zero. A couple extra steps you can do are 1. Add stock footage of a firecracker so that sparks shoot out of the gun. I was never really a fan of this look, but I know So Crispy Media used to do it all the time back in their videos. 2. You can take footage of rotating bullet shells. You can find one in Action Essentials 2, and keyframe animate that to fly out of the gun. I'll do this for specific shots where it's really noticeable and looks cool. Other than that, it's very time consuming and usually isn't necessary. Last few tips when doing multiple muzzle flashes is I always try to adjust the size, the look of the muzzle flash, and the opacity of each individual one so they don't look super uniform. The difference is this compared to this. 
If you want to get the slide on a machine gun to go back, you can just cover that with a black solid for a single frame. And if you're doing a shotgun, I like to take the footage of an explosive charge and do that instead of a single frame muzzle flash. I'll usually speed the charge to last about three frames. It's stylized may not be the way you want to do it, but I think it looks cool, so that's usually what I go with. Same with slow motion muzzle flashes. Use a charge that lasts several frames instead of just a single frame. That's how you do a muzzle flash effect, and I've finally done a tutorial on it, and I feel complete in life now, so keep an eye out for a new tutorial next week. Probably not next week, probably in like a couple months, but hey, I want to speak it into existence. Buh bye bye